Radio Network. This is Two Double C. Joining me in the studio, Zed Soselja and Katie Gallagher. Why should people vote for you and not one of the independents? I think there's significant risks there. I think there's significant risks uh, when it comes to the economy. I really think uh, we need strong voices in the Senate. I think I've been a strong voice for Canberra in the Senate. The race for the ACT Senate is usually one of the most predictable in the country. But this year, the two incumbents, one Liberal, one Labor, are being forced to fight on the airwaves with an unusual intensity. This man is one. Former Wallaby and environmentalist David Pocock is running a very high-profile campaign. Although his campaign colour is navy, the Independent has a lot in common with the so-called teal candidates. He's financially backed by Climate 200 and is demanding more action to curb carbon emissions as well as a federal anti-corruption watchdog. We are such a safe area. You know, it's, it's all Labor and, and one... Liberal Senator and we've seen in politics if you're safe you get taken for granted. Good evening and welcome to the National Tally Room here in the Belconnen High School in Canberra. Since 1975, when the two ACT Senate spots were first contested, they've only ever gone to the two major parties, although both the Australian Democrats and the Greens have secured substantial levels of support in the past. Liberal incumbent Zed Sezelja is a Conservative who is currently the Morrison government minister responsible for the Pacific and relations with countries such as the Solomon Islands. Today's our date day. He believes this is the best funded challenge he's experienced. There's no doubt that if we were to lose this seat to someone like David Pocock that the Labor Party would be emboldened in government and the Labor Greens Alliance would be able to pass much more of its legislation, uh, particularly, I think, at the radical fringes. So um, it would very much drag the Senate a lot further to the left. There's a lot to do. Yeah. But recent polls suggest David Pocock is stripping a lot of support away from parties on the left, and his small yet very slick campaign team, which is set up in the back of his house, has Labor worried enough to roll out a former PM. Hi, I'm Julia Gillard and I'm here to give a very big shout out to a great friend of mine, Senator Katie Gallagher of the ACT. Katie Gallagher will be the next finance minister if an Albanese government is elected on Saturday. She's nervous she could miss out if Can Berens votes strategically for David Pocock in a bid to boot Zed Sezelja. I think one of the issues, certainly from for me, is that many people for some reason think that I'm already automatically elected somehow. So quite often they'll come up and go, well, you're fine, Katie, so we're going to go and vote this way. Um, and that's a, a big challenge for, for me. If David Pocock does defy history and snatch a spot, he could be very influential over the next government's agenda. He is one of just a few independents or small party candidates that look to be in with a serious chance of being elected and they could hold the balance of power on contentious bills. The ACT is a real wild card for this election. It is only two seats, but the balances in the Senate are really fine because of the use of proportional representation. You need 39 of 76 seats to pass legislation. At half-Senate elections like this one, state races are often split evenly on broad left-right ideological lines due to preference flows. For example, the six spots up for grabs in New South Wales are currently held by three coalition senators, two Labor and one Green, and that split is likely to stay the same. The contests which throw out that balance or give one side an advantage are key. In Tasmania, Jackie Lambie is trying to secure a second senator for her populist party at the expense of veteran Liberal Erica Betts. In South Australia, two of the six are currently held by centrist crossbenchers Sterling Griff and Rex Patrick. Those two spots, though, will be hot contested, including by the Greens and returning independent Nick Xenophon. While in Queensland, the six being fought over are currently held by three LNP senators, one from One Nation and two from Labor. This time, the Greens are a chance at snatching a spot. They're the key contest to watch, though. Watch Western Australia, because the WA normally has a lock on three seats for the Liberal Party. But given what happened at the last state election over there, there's a possibility that Labor may win three seats for the first time in a long time. And with a Green, that could deliver an extra seat for the left.
On current polling and Senate numbers, neither party is likely to be anywhere close to having an upper house majority. If the coalition retains government, it would prefer to just deal with independent crossbenchers. So the final number of them and their political leaning will be key to its prospects of passing bills. But if Anthony Albanese becomes prime minister, then it's likely he'll try to negotiate with a combination of the crossbenchers and the Greens. Yes, Max, your local candidate. Hi, nice to meet you. Senator, lovely hey, to meet you. The Greens claim they are on track to become the largest third party in the history of the Australian Senate. Which should boot Pauline Hanson out of the balance of power and put the Greens in the balance of power and give us real leverage to push for the things that will improve people's daily lives. One big unknown is what sort of impact minor right-wing parties like those run by Pauline Hanson and Clive Palmer could have on the final outcome. Yeah, that's my kind of party. At the last election, their attack advertising and preferences helped the coalition, particularly in Queensland. So make Australia agree, we got what is interesting this time is that the UAP campaign tactics have been very different. They haven't been hammering Labor through the campaign. They've run quite a lot of ads which have been critical of all the parties. If that causes UAP preferences to drift more evenly between the parties, that will be a blow for the LNP and a, and a help for Labor. The same may also apply to One Nation preferences. The Senate is complicated and often overlooked during campaigns, but after election night, it's likely to play a big role in shaping Australia's future. Those final seats matter, certainly for governments, how they get their agenda through and the type of Senate and how it behaves. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.